So today's video is about a very interesting topic, which is volatility in the stock markets. We keep on hearing everywhere that you know this stock is more volatile, this stock is less volatile. But what does volatility exactly mean? That is what we are going to talk about in this video. So volatility exactly is uh, you know the the dispersion in stock prices. Is this stock moving very rapidly? So that is what people call a volatile stock. So to uh, look at an example about volatile stocks, let's uh, think of Paytm. Right, Paytm is a stock that has had some very very sharp move, sharp up move, sharp down moves, and obviously it's a very volatile stock because it moves very wildly. You compare that with let's say a stock like ITC, which tends to be extremely stable and you know it's slow moving. and uh, you know quite safe in a sense for investors and you will see what does a low volatile and a high volatile stock means see why are stocks volatile uh, there are various reasons for it sometimes investors are not sure about the prospects of the business there is a lot of speculation going on uh, to give you an example of a stock like adani right whenever that news came out ki some scam has happened there was a lot of uh, up and down movements one day it will go up one day it will go down similarly for paytm again you know there was a red flag which caused a lot of volatility so usually you know a lot of speculative news and worry in terms of investors so volatility is more like a fear that investors have and that is what causes these wild moves see volatility while it is uh, like we said a sense of fear that is there in the market it is also measurable right so there are various ways through which people measure volatility first is just the historical volatility so i would just look at uh, the standard deviation of stock prices right how what is the magnitude of change from their mean right how much does the return change from the mean very if it's changing a lot then it's a volatile stock if it stays near the mean then it is a less volatile stock so that is one measure it is historical volatility along with it there is something called implied volatility right implied volatility is measured based on option prices where people are taking speculative bets on the future direction right so what is the implied uh, volatility in those prices is what we call iv or implied volatility so implied volatility talks about future fear the fear of the future it's not about the previous fear but it's about the future fear and that gives you a very clear indication on what is the expectation people have in terms of the future price movements there are also various other ways through which people will look at volatility or measures of risk uh, let's say a var ratio or a number of other ways of doing it uh, some of these can actually be done through an excel if you have stock returns in your excel then you can just do a standard deviation on excel and you will get a measure of volatility and uh, to standardize people typically would annualize it to you know uh, a year worth of volatility and that's how they can compare it across the board so you know it's quite simple to measure volatility by a normal investor as well so see like i said people want to compare volatility across the same time horizon right so let's say i am creating i'm measuring volatility for the last one month as a standard deviation of last one month of prices i have to annualize it to uh let's say a standard period right so people annualize it as it measure it across a year make it comparable to a year worth of volatility you know that's what people do so typically somebody would annualize a volatility before they sort of talk about it so that it is much more compared so let's say you have a mutual fund you are reporting ki this is my volatility so it would be standard annualize let's say somebody has some other strategy when they report volatility how will you compare these two if they are in the same units right so another type of volatility is forecasted volatility right so instead of just relying on historical data what we will do is uh, take certain metrics historically and try to forecast what will that volatility look like in the future and that is called forecasted volatility so along with historical volatility which is just old and implied volatility which is based on expectations you can also use different metrics to forecast volatility so forecasting volatility is again a very very complex uh, way uh, see what we think is that the volatility actually changes across periods right there are periods where you have low volatility in the index and then sometimes suddenly the the market changes and you have a zone of high volatility right 
so i think being able to understand when that switch happens is the most critical because i know in a low volatility environment i can do a lot whereas when i enter a high risk environment then i have to reduce my risk right so being able to forecast volatility is the key thing and uh, how will you forecast volatility there are various ways certain people look at uh, certain you know statistical models something called markov chains which help you forecast these volatility zones otherwise people will look at uh, you know machine learning models they are you know they will pick up data from macroeconomic right from let's say historical prices volatility and they will try to forecast the volatility in the future see what we have typically seen is that the growth rate or the volatility in india is typically based on the fundamentals right if inflation is rising in india then suddenly you see the volatility has increased right if interest rates are rising then volatility has increased interest rates are cut you see that okay volatility has reduced and we are doing well so these uh, macroeconomic indicators also play a very strong role in forecasting the volatility so that's why people would use that along with price data along with fast moving indicators and try to forecast volatility and it's a very interesting uh, topic obviously it's not a exact science but if you can get accurate about it then you can make a lot of difference in your portfolio so we talked about implied volatility right so there a very important indicator is wix right the volatility index so you will see something like india wix if you search on it on your google or in your broking terminal you will see there's a instrument called india wix right which measures the implied volatility in the market what implied volatility means the expectations of volatility in the next 30 days and what is the expectation the market participants are having about the risk in the market in the next 30 days it is typically measured as the you know there are options in the market so which are options are at the money in the market there is a volatility measure for them and people sort of use that implied volatility as the wix index and that ends up being a very strong uh, indication of the fear and greed in the market right so look at all across the last year people were in a bull market the wix levels were at the lowest for decades right but if you look at uh, a 2020 crisis so right before the crash happened the wix index went shot through the roof right the fear in the market when it increased so the wix index was a very very clear indication of the amount of fear so the wix index or uh, the volatility index is a very important indicator of fear in the market and you know if you are let's say looking at when to uh, reduce your exposure to equity or when to hedge your portfolio or how to counter the risk i think looking at the wix index is extremely important beyond if the wix crosses a certain threshold i think it's uh, it makes sense to you know keep our safeguards up and you know protect our capital so we also look very carefully at the wix index because that helps us understand what is the level of fear in the market if there is fear in the market it doesn't always mean ki you know it is a bad thing sometimes people are fearful in a good time also uh, but it's always interesting to understand what is the fear that that the market participants are seeing so we watch that very carefully in some of our strategies what we do is that if the wix levels goes beyond a certain level and we are also seeing some correction into our strategy we will just go ahead and hedge our strategy so that we are reducing the downside right we are doing a downside protection in the strategy that is one thing we do along with it i think at right research we have a strong focus on forecasting risk also so we all our strategies are based on something called a regime model right which where what we are trying to forecast is is the market going to be in a high risk zone or a low risk zone based on macro data based on technical indicators and we take all our decision based on that regime model when we are in a high risk regime then we are trying to protect capital because there are limited opportunities and greater downside when we are in a low risk regime then we take risk and we try to make the best out of the market so uh, you know it is volatility trying to forecast it looking at what the implied volatility is extremely important for any investor and you know if you get a good sense of volatility i think that will make your journey even better and i think especially for you know younger investors newer investors you know while looking at the market and seeing all the returns makes it you know very simple and easy it is only when the volatility hits that you realize okay this is the risk and if you have to panic with that volatility i think uh, you know you will have a tough journey ahead so understanding volatility what is the downside that you can see what is the uh, ups and downs that come along with long term investing i think is extremely important 
so volatility is like we said extremely important and we model our portfolios a lot based on the volatility we even have something called deallocation policy in high risk environments when we see uh, that the volatility has gone over and above expectation you know every few years you see something that has never happened in the market and you panic so we have a fail safe there where we deallocate some part of it from our strategy we move to cash and we counter the volatility in that way and that helps us in our uh, long term investing journey so i think this was a quick introduction about volatility i think it's very important for people to understand especially bigger investors that volatility is part and parcel of investing high returns come with high risk and high risk is what volatility means and you know for us it is very simple to talk about it in mathematical term but when you put in your money and when you see it go up and down that is what a volatility actually is and only if that you get comfortable with that will you be able to enjoy the long term benefits of investing so i hope this video was useful in helping you understand about the concepts of volatility in the market maybe make you a little bit more comfortable with the volatility if you like this video please do hit the like button subscribe to our channel and also let us know in the comments what you would like us to talk next till then happy investing we'll see you in the next one